You may remember this problem when we were looking at Newton's third law in two dimensions. We had one block falling on another block, and we wanted to know what was their final speed. Let's listen to me set up the original problem. So I have a block, which I will call blue, with mass m sub b, that is sliding frictionlessly along the ground with a speed of v sub i. There's a second block, which I will call red, which falls on it from above. Now when it hits, we say it doesn't bounce, but it's sliding with friction along the blue block until it comes to rest, relative to the blue block. Now at that time, both are moving with the same speed in the same direction, but it's going to be different than the initial speed that blue had. And the question is, what is that speed? So to analyze that, well, how did we do it? Well, we had to use Newton's second law, identify the object, look at the forces, free body diagram. We had to figure out the relative motion of the objects because we had to figure out where our frictional force was and what direction it pointed. And then coordinate system, sum of the forces equals mass times the acceleration. We had to do that in both the x and the y axis to be able to understand how the frictional force was giving the acceleration, did some algebra, came up with the acceleration, but that wasn't enough. We still had to look at the second block, again identify all the forces, free body diagram, identify the coordinate system, where was the frictional force, we related the Newton's third law force pairs between the frictional forces and that helped us out on the direction. We had to do Newton's second law both dimensions to come up with what was going on identified the Newton's third law force pairs to relate the two to come up with a second acceleration for the blue block. Of course, the accelerations weren't enough. We had to apply our constant acceleration equations to both objects to come up with equations for the final velocity of both, use algebra to compare the two, and finally came up with the final velocity. And there it is. The final velocity was the mass of the blue block, the heavier one, times the original speed divided by the total mass. And at the time, I hinted that maybe looking at this under the context of conservation of linear momentum might be insightful. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's take a look at this example using conservation of linear momentum. First, we need a system. And the system is going to be both blocks together. Now we need to know, is there an external net force on that system? And we have to look at each dimension individually. In the y-axis, there certainly is a net external force. We can see the gravity is having a significant effect. When it hits, some sort of vertical force stops the red block, and that's going to correlate into additional normal forces from the ground on the blue block. Regardless, there are net external forces on the system in the y-direction, and linear momentum is not conserved in this example. However, what about the x-dimension? If I look at the whole system of the two blocks together, there are no forces on the system at all in the x dimension. The surface between the ground and the blue block is frictionless. That means momentum is conserved in the x dimension. So let's do that. I'm going to choose two points in time, and the first point will be, of course, here, and the second point here, where they're going at the same speed. So initially, what is the total momentum in the x direction? Well, that's just the momentum of the blue block would be the mass of blue times the velocity of blue, and it's in the positive x direction. What's the final momentum at the end? Well, they're both moving at the same speed, so the total final momentum will be the mass of blue times the final velocity, and the mass of red times the final velocity. And conservation of momentum says that the momentum initially must equal the final momentum. Some algebra, I can factor out the final velocity solve for the final velocity, and there it is. Seriously, that's it. I brought back the figure from before. It is exactly the same answer. The final velocity is equal to the mass of the blue block divided by the total mass times the initial velocity. What did we learn from this? First of all, when using conservation of linear momentum, you look at each dimension separately. Just because momentum was not conserved in the y, did not mean it, it wasn't conserved in the x. And we... Second, this was so powerful because we didn't have to know anything that was going on about the forces internal to the system. 
When we solved this before, we spent all of our time on these internal forces, the friction between them and the effects that that had. If there's no net external force, you can apply conservation of linear momentum to the system, and you don't have to know anything about the internal forces.